This is my mountain unicycle. It has a chunky off-road tire, grips to rest your hands, studded pedals, and even a disc brake that you operate with a lever underneath the saddle. There's no freewheeling this thing, because the cranks are directly fixed to the wheel, so if you're moving, you're pedaling. It's certainly not the most sensible choice for a touring machine, but in September of this year, I set off on a mission to ride it across a country. I'd be alone, wild camping along the way, with the added difficulty of sticking exclusively to an established hiking route. That's ridiculously steep. This series follows that attempt, and to say the journey was challenging would be an understatement. It's a very inconvenient tree there. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> it is mushroom season at the moment. This is Baravik, very good. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hello there, and welcome to Latvia. I'm currently right in the northeast of the country, right at the border between Latvia and Estonia. And for the next few weeks, I'm going to be following what's called the Baltic Forest Trail through the country down towards Lithuania. It's a hiking trail, but I'm not going to be hiking it. I'm going to be attempting to unicycle it. So to give you a bit of background, my name's Ed Pratt, and five years ago, I rode a unicycle 22,000 miles around the world. The trip took me a total of three years, and it was achieved on a 36-inch wheel. This large diameter was perfect for the asphalt I was mainly following, but I always struggled with maneuverability whenever the route became rougher. Which is why, for this trip, I opted for a lighter setup, much more optimised for off-road. So very quickly then, this is my new unicycle. It's a more kind of bikey-packy type setup. Got a bit of food in this one. Got tent here, we got water bottle up top, big old water bottle down there. I've got my fuel for my stove, got clothes in this one and sleeping bag, and then there's a bit more food and the actual stove is in that bag as well. The majority of this trip, I think, is gonna be on sort of single track type stuff. So I'm hoping that this unicycle holds up to it, and I hope that I hold up to it, because I haven't unicycled for a little while. <laughs> About five years to be precise. So I'm hoping I haven't forgotten. Okay, three, two, one. Oh, oh. oh no, that's too rough. <laughs> uh, I meant to do that, honest. Let's, let's get to a proper track. So in Latvian, the path that I'm following is called the Mezteka, and I think these signs indicate that I'm going the right way. All right, here we go. And so the ride had begun. 674 kilometers of beautiful forest trail lay ahead of me, and I couldn't wait to experience all of it. Oh, I can't tell you how good it feels to be back on the unicycle. Yeah, this one is a 27.5 inch wheel, whereas my world unicycle was a 36 inch wheel. So the wheel's a lot smaller, but it's got a thicker tire. So I should be able to ride on some much rougher terrain. Oh wow, look at those steps. <laughs> I feel like this is quite a good point to say that I actually don't know how long this is going to take me. I'm estimating that I can probably do 20 or 30 kilometers a day, but I'm not really sure what the terrain is going to be like. And if there's a lot of stuff like this, and obviously um, it's going to be even slower going than I thought. Now, if you didn't know, Latvia is located in northeastern Europe, just here and is one of three countries that make up the Baltic states. The Baltic Forest Trail passes through both Lithuania and Estonia, but I'll only be covering the Latvia section on this trip. This video is kindly sponsored by Latvia Travel. If it inspires you to want to check out the Baltic Forest Trail for yourself, please head over to the top link in my description to find out more. All right, this section coming up looks half rideable, so I'm gonna give it a go. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yes, 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 yes. This is. Oh, no! That was a route. That was a route I didn't see. Even though it had been a while since I'd last toured, my unicycling muscle memory thankfully kicked back in, and I was off wobbling down the trail. Bit of a climb there. Well, that's fine, that's fine. All right, up, 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 up. Climb it, climb it! Yes! Yes! Okay. God, this is right on the edge of what I'm capable of doing. 
I mean, I think we're probably doing enough exercise, but I feel like I've got to go up this thing anyway. It's called Cornetti Sightseeing Tower. It's 27 meters high. Well, why not? Why not, eh? Ooh. And you know what? There's a bit of wind up here. <laughs> oh yeah, don't look down. Ooh. Yeah, that's a bit freaky, that is. From up here, I caught my first real glimpse of the landscape I'll be traveling through for the next few weeks. It is properly pretty, isn't it? Look out there. Is that a water tower there? Must be right. Those sort of bobbles. All right, I need to keep moving. But cool tower. Yes, 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 yes. Oh my God. Yeah, that is completely blocking the path, isn't it? Uh, right, I think I just need to pick this thing up and we'll see what we can do. Yeah, I knew that would happen. That was a, it was a very inconvenient tree, that. <laughs> right, onwards. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm starting to think that maybe I was a bit ambitious thinking I could unicycle this route. It would be possible, I think, without all my luggage on the, on the bike, but that's the reality of this trip. I'm, I'm not trying to unicycle the whole thing. I'm just trying to unicycle bits that I can and I'm hoping that that outweighs the walking. <laughs> oh, more stairs. Oh, how I love them. Oh, how I love them. So the issue I'm running into is when I'm picking up the unicycle and walking up the steps, the framework is like digging into my hands and I don't know how many more steps like this are gonna be en route, but I suspect there's gonna be a lot more of this. So I think it's better off that I do something about it now I'm gonna try and do my best to wrap the kind of problem area in some old inner tube and I'm hoping that will sort of pad it out a little bit. It's not pretty, but I think it will do. The way I lift the unicycle is I point it this direction and then I put my hand down here over these little nubbins and then I lift. Oh, that's so much more comfortable. I mean, it's still gonna hurt over time, but that's not digging in anywhere near as much as it was. So apparently it is mushroom season in the forest at the moment and a lot of Latvians will come out and they'll collect mushrooms themselves to eat. Obviously I don't know what I'm doing, but I can believe it. Because if you look anywhere, you see all these different varieties of mushrooms. Bloody massive. Uh, so I'm hoping at some point on this trip, I'll be able to connect with someone who knows what they're doing. I'll be able to try some Latvian mushroom. Right, let's get through this next set of steps. The addition of the inner tube padding worked wonderfully, and eventually, after even more climbing, I popped out of the trees onto a small grassy mound. Wow, okay, I've made this some kind of viewpoint. I think this is where the path follows the road for a little bit. And to be totally honest, I am very grateful for that. This has been quite tough so far, and I'm happy to do a bit of actual riding. This area of Latvia really isn't very populated at all. I mean, to be fair, Latvia itself isn't very populated. I think there's just under 2 million people. And so far I've perhaps a couple of farms, but certainly out here I'm not seeing many people. These kind of tracks are pretty much perfect. It's like there's enough of a challenge that it's not dull road riding, but I can ride and I can actually make a decent progress. It's unbelievably peaceful here. There's a few birds that I can hear, but that's it. There's a lake to my left, but it's, it's like crystal clear. <laughs> Look what I just came across. That's the work of beavers, right? Well, if we're lucky, we might see some. You know, I'm actually quite enjoying this mix of riding and walking. It sort of uses different muscles and kind of keeps me quite engaged. Ah, ow. <laughs> Just bashed my head on that log. Okay. I think I can get around on the right. At this point, I'd made it a measly 10 kilometers and there was only a couple of hours of daylight left. Now, to be fair, due to the logistics of getting out here, I hadn't actually started the ride until 3 p.m. But even so, this day was gonna be a slow one. 
It was here, while slowly working my way around the lake, that I had the sudden realisation that I've forgotten to pack one very tiny, but very crucial piece of camping equipment. So, yeah, I can't cook my food tonight unless I find some matches or a lighter or some way of creating a spark. Not much I can do about it at the moment. Just gonna keep moving. I think it gets dark in about 45 minutes. Oh yes. Oh yeah, we can ride this. So I just looked on the map and in about 500 meters, there is a guest house. So I'm hoping that I might be able to find a lighter there. Are they burning? Sort of random stuff. Is this the guest house? Yeah, I think maybe the guest house is slightly further up. Ah. Oh no. I think this is the guest house. It all looks very closed up. So that didn't work then. I don't know where the next place is. I need to check my map. You want to see how far I've gone? That's depressing. That's where I started. That's where I am. And that's what I've got to do. It's been a slow day. I mean, yeah, it's already eight o'clock. I could go back and ask at that house. It depends how badly I want a lighter, really. It depends how badly I want to have hot dinner and hot breakfast in the morning. Back to the house it was. <laughs> All right. I don't know where the entrance is of this house. I haven't seen a, like a driveway, but it looks like people use this maybe. Okay, let's see. Now, I knew next to no Latvian, so I wasn't entirely sure how I was going to explain my situation. As an ex-Soviet state, about a third of Latvians do know Russian, so while mine's extremely poor, I figured it might be my best bet. Sveiki, hello. Thank you. Do you speak English? No. Mm -hmm. um, Paruski? Yeah. Uh, um, Utebi jest um, I like lighter. T -t uh. It goes without saying that it would have helped greatly if I remembered the word for lighter. Yeah, I think if someone turned up at my door uninvited with a unicycle, I might be a little bemused too. Eventually, with the help of Google Translate, I finally made myself understood. This one. Oh, it's chill, though. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Oh, she was lovely, wasn't she? I. Uh, my Russian is so bad. Right, got matches. Now we're gonna carry on and find somebody to camp. It is well and truly getting dark now. I think I'm going the right way, I'm not totally sure. Um, so I'm basically just on the lookout for somewhere to camp. Yeah, I'm gonna push into there. Yeah, it was a tough day. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna get the tent up because I wanna lie down and I wanna sleep. But first I wanna eat, and that's the order. Yeah. <laughs> tent, eat, sleep. Yes, please. Oh, look at these. Matches have never looked so good. I'm pooped. That was a really difficult day. It just, it just felt long. Um, it felt a bit frantic. But we've begun. <laughs> That's the main thing. Um, I had a quick look at the map and I don't think I've gone more than like 15 kilometers today. But it's fine. We've started and that's all that really matters. I'm going to devour this whole pan of food. Then I'm going to get some sleep and I'll see you in the morning. And uh, I hope you're excited, as excited as I am, to watch me try and unicycle across Latvia. All right. Good night. If you're eager to see how this trip progresses, the next three episodes are already available to watch over on my Patreon. It's also the place where you can sign up to have your name written at the end of each of my videos, just like all of these wonderful people. 
Thank you again to Latvia Travel for sponsoring this video, and I'll see you next time as I continue to unicycle across the country. Bye-bye.